ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today, we're going to talk about Pedro Lopez. He's a Colombian serial killer and child rapist who murdered a minimum of 110 girls from 1967 to 1980 and claimed that he had murdered 300 more victims across Colombia, Peru, and uh, Ecuador. Released from Colombia's minimum facility in 1998, his whereabouts is currently unknown. Aside Lopez. from... Hold on, uh, says Lopez? Yeah. Because I'm seeing Pedro Rodriguez. Hijo. I fucking gave you the wrong one. You haven't picked that up. Johnny, we had a Maybe full Maybe it would help if you this. sent me the right one there, Cheese I did. Mom. He did. No. He sent me the right one. I did it in a group. Because I already covered the other guy. Me and Chris were just saying how unprofessional this is actually is. And yes, I'm going to keep this in the recording because I am very unprofessional. No, 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 no. The words that I used were what? Amateur hour. Fucking yeah. embarrassing is the words that okay. came out of my mouth. All right. Embarrassing. Wait. I got to do this properly. Hold on. Oh, my God. He's going into it. His... <laughs> He's doing it. He's doing it. Fucking <laughs> yeah. embarrassing. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So sad. Why I love you, brother. God. <laughs> uh, All right, we're just gonna uh, skip back. Yeah, back we, I, this, this, no, this right here is a brand new record. This is the earliest in the episode that we've gone off the tracks. <laughs> this, right no, this, this is true. New I usually, and I'm, this wasn't my fault this time. No. It was. It was not. Yeah. I mean, but to, it, be, it, to be fair, it's my to fault. Be fair, yeah. To be fair, my, it, it, well, it's my fault. I know it's my fault. Hold on, hold on. Now yes, he has to I'm explain fine. to his wife how he fucked. <laughs> the her. reason why you heard me yell, it's fucking embarrassing, is because David <laughs> is running this show like a very rank amateur. He's running He's straight like a into the ground. Junior high child who saw his first pair of titties. In the national bumbling, rumbling, stumbling, fumbling. It's like Chris Berman had a stroke in him. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> there is literally none of that I can argue against. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I I was like, listen, <laughs> me, no, no, uh, no. <laughs> now he got everything one hundred percent correct. He's out of line. But he's not wrong. <laughs> See, this this right here is going to set us. This is how we go straight to the top. Is is rank yeah. amateurness? <laughs> it's a train wreck effect, man. You just can't look away from it. Hey, yeah, exactly. They're going to tune in each week just to see how bad things can go for. Chris Berman's yeah. publicist is going to let him know, and then he's going to tell his publicist, "You tweet those guys, and you tell them <laughs> thanks for the shout out." <laughs> cha ching. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as bad. It's <laughs> it's almost as bad. It's almost as bad because I like I was telling him before you got on is when I whenever I have Tansy, Tansy has you know he has an audience. He has a big audience, and he's been running the podcast for a while. 
it takes us almost about 30 to 45 minutes to get everything. I have everything on my end squared away. He's he's working on his end. I'm like, it no, it okay. I'll just wait. Do it again. Okay. <laughs> and, and at that point, I'm looking at everything and I'm like, you know, I think this is I, I'm not doing a j- good job. And then I have somebody that does a good job. And I'm like wondering how 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 are we lower than him? <laughs> but he's a great guy. Love him to death. Love you, Tansy. Failure stop podcast. Check him out. But anyways, going back, we're going for the early life. Uh, First Lopez. of all, is Johnny on the same page as we are now? Oh, I yeah, want to yeah, make yeah. sure. Moving Pedro forward. Alonso Lopez, born on the 8th of October in the year of our Lord, 1948. He's a Colombian serial killer and jail rapist who murdered a minimum of 110 young girls from 1969 to 1980 and claimed to have murdered over 300 victims across Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Yes. Can confirm. I already read that. That, but was, that was a is... very nice recap. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank I you wanted Chris to make Burke. sure that David knew unequivocally beyond the shadow of a military doubt in his mind that I was on the same page. I was Okay. And plus, I wanted to deliver the opening of that uh, that uh, riveting opening that you had with a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for, panache. Grab Latino X. Is that what they're going with? Latino X? It's what the Democrats are saying now. So it must be true. Johnny puts the X in Latino X. <laughs> <laughs> Lopez was born to uh, Benita Lopez da Cinta. Uh, according to Lopez, witness accounts of prostitution by his mother while growing up had dis- uh, just dis- disturbing effect on his uh, psychological health. Su- uh, subsequently, his mother caught him fondling his younger sister in 1957 when he was eight years old and evicted him from the family home. Pedro who was reported the 17th child of 13 siblings. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It hang on. Like hang on. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop there for a second. Redo okay. that math. Think about that math there for a second. Pedro was, was reportedly was the, the 17th, 17th child, child of 13. Out of 13? He was the 17th out of 13. Oh, seventh. Okay, seventh child amongst 13 siblings. Thank you, Chris, for keeping me on track. I tried. Yeah. I uh, fail often, but I tried. This yeah. week's installment of David's Dyslexia is brought by brought to you courtesy of his parents. You're welcome. Shop smart. Shop S smart. S smart. <laughs> sometimes maybe good. Sometimes maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, we're gonna wear that button out. It's, okay. it's gonna be. It's gonna be like a knob. I'm gonna have to make a new <laughs> fucking button for it. Uh, <laughs> And evicted him from the home. Uh, he was uh, was a uh, polite as a boy and wanted to be a teacher, according to his mother. Following this, the eight year old Pedro Lopez had filed to Bogota, Colombia, capital city. Soon afterwards, he said he had been abducted by a man and raped. At age twelve, Pedro was taken in by a U.S. immigrant uh, family and enrolled to a school for orphans. He ran away after two years, according to one of the accounts, because he uh been molested by a male teacher. Other sources claim that he ran away with a teacher. Now, going on the murders, Lopez claimed that during his incarceration for car theft, he was brutally gang raped. Jesus. And that subs- subsequently... While he was uh, still in prison, he hunted down most of the br- uh, most of the br- brutal of his rapists and killed them. He said that after being released from prison, he moved to Peru and started murdering young girls. Lopez claimed that <clears throat> by 1978, he killed over 100 girls before being caught and captured by the members of the indigenous tribe. These captors were preparing to execute him when a missionary from the United States intervened and uh, persuaded them to hand him over to the state police. However, the police quickly released him. 
Gotta love Colombia. Lopez said that he uh, that he was subsequently returned to Colombia and later moved to Ecuador. During this period, he claimed he had killed about three girls a week. Lopez said, I like the girls in Ecuador. They are more gentle and trusting. More innocent. Ugh, what a fucking shit pump. All right, Johnny. Uh, well, actually, this is going to be pretty... I can read this whole fucking thing really quick. Lopez was arrested. The arrest. Yeah, you can do the uh, arrest and release. Lopez was arrested when an attempted abduction failed and he was trapped by market traders. The Associated Press reported that he was arrested on Mar in March of 1980 and confessed to killing 200 young girls and possibly up to 350 in total. Now, at his release, according to CNN, Lopez was arrested in 1980, but was freed by the government in Ecuador at the end of 1998. In an interview from his prison cell, Lopez described himself as the man of the century and said he was being released for, quote, good behavior. An A&E biography documentary reported that he was released from an Ecuadorian prison on 31 August 1994, then rearrested as an illegal immigrant and handed over the, to the Colombian authorities, who charged him with a 20-year-old murder. He was declared insane and held in the psychiatric wing of a Bogota hospital. Now, in 1998, he was declared sane and released on $50 bail. Certain, $50 uh, certain, bail? Uh, right, certain subject conditions. He later absconded. The same documentary <laughs> says that Interpol released an advisory for his <clears throat> rearrest by Colombian authorities over a fresh murder in 2002, and he was currently wanted by the police. His whereabouts are currently unknown as of 2002. Now, the uh, 2006 edition of the Guinness World uh, Book of World Records credited Lopez as being the most prolific serial killer. The listing was removed after complaints that it made a, co a competition out of murder. Which it did. Yeah, yeah, it did. It does kind of seem to be in poor taste. Yeah. yeah. This is but it's, it's, on, the, on this case right here, one... I hate to say this, but the exchange rate in in the S South America uh, area for being like let out for bail, fifty bucks mm -hmm. for murder. Jeez, I mean, there's there's that one chick in town that asked to have her bail lower from a hundred thousand to fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah, good old Judge <laughs> McKnight told her to <laughs> go ahead and just sit your ass down. Uh, yeah, you know, I always thought it, I thought it was kind of funny because when you when when I when I when I saw that that article and I sent it to you, I'm reading that and I'm like, that's the same judge that presided over my divorce. Yeah. So just for context here, guys, mm -hmm. 50, 50 U.S. dollars is two hundred and forty six thousand. 531 and a half Colombian pesos. Jesus. As of January 5th. So what you're saying is is if you it, it just reminds me of that Euro trip, that part in Euro trip when they handed somebody a nickel and he just slaps his boss he's like, I retire now and just walks <laughs> off. That's what it reminds me. It, it does. It does feel like that. <laughs> but uh, the, another part of the but story. Regardless, I, I, what I really want to touch on, and, and I, I feel like this was kind of glossed over in the actual listing, was he was declared insane, uh -huh. criminally insane. And was released after four years? No, he was declared sane. Yeah. After four years? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was declared sane after four years. After killing a hundred freaking girls. Well, okay. Here, and I'm, I'm about to get into this. I did a little bit more research on uh, the stuff. It, it, stuff in South America is totally different than in, in the United States. To the point to where uh, because they do uh like crime lawyers can tell whatever uh if they murder a whole bunch of people they're only charged for one murder 
They can only be charged for one murder. And they had evidence of the hundred, but they can only charge him for one murder. That's the reason why he got what he got. So they just they just collect all the the data for the murder victims and everything. It's like okay, now that indigenous tribe had the right fucking idea and just the, like, exactly you know it's like and then and like, then big us with its heart was like we should give it to the judges and do justice like like screw the fuck you that missionary man that screw you i don't know who you were i don't care what denomination i don't i don't care i don't care yeah screw you yeah fuck that shit. anybody deserved to be put down like a freaking rabid dog it was just yeah, it, it it is just freaking sad that they 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 had a chance to like snuff this out right uh, right from the get go and look what happened. I mean, he had already done enough damage up to that point, and then it was just like <laughs> he's learned his lesson. He's fine. Yeah, it it's ridiculous, but uh, fucking embarrassing is what it is. Yeah. I guess we can go up for another one. I didn't think this was going to be so short. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Boy, if you had a nickel for it, never mind. I had a nickel for every time I thought about Barb. <laughs> Barb? Barb. <laughs> Barb. Ah, Barb. David, David, David. Hi. Don't get just, it. Is he not just when I think that there's a sliver of hope, a light at the end of the tunnel, upon which Chris and I could gaze upon you with a sense of pride, knowing that you have obtained a degree of of a modicum of basic manliness. knowledge. Here you go, and you just you ratchet that bar just a little bit higher. And demonstrate your absolute ineptitude for all things pop culture. Well, the reason why I don't, I didn't bring up this. I'll send this in the group chat. I'll send this in the group chat. Yeah, I'm not picking paying attention, fuckers. You never do. Why would you start now? Fuck yeah. Yeah, we talk. We talk shit. And I mean, at least I had it. a legitimate excuse for not being in fucking uniform tonight. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't issued the beanie. I don't. I don't feel like that's the correct excuse because we've had the merch club available for how long now, and I, that's a how? failure on your part, quite frankly. Six months. Given the fact but that historically months. that I have had hell, high water, and just an S1 clerk's nightmare of problems <laughs> with the uh, the coffee club. I mean, he does I have a valid I had point. to remedy myself today by creating a completely new profile. I just want to point out here that I'm not connected to that in any way. I just want to throw that I out mean, there. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm not saying that anybody's particularly at fault. No, you just gazed at me really hard when you said that. I, I wasn't gazing at you specifically. <laughs> what it is? But this, this is I was, what I, think I was it gazing is. through you. Through? No, through. I think was, he was gazing right at the emblem that's on your beanie, and you felt the hate through I your could, head. I I could feel a burning sensation. Yes. I mean, I felt it too. The heat coming off it was. They fun. make shots wow. for that, Chris, but I digress. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> uh, have, have you have you uh, been keeping up with the uh, Idaho murders? I'm not. Uh, uh, well, the only reason why I, I've been keeping up with it because it comes on a failure stop podcast, the uh, Trajasis, uh Andrea up all night just keeps on uh, banging this away and talking about it. But now they're saying that the Idaho murder suspects, Brian uh, Koberger, uh, studied under experts on serial killers, uh, BK, BTK killer, uh, daughter six, uh, sick at news. 
What? I think they're just reaching. <clears throat> ah, fuck it. Let's go to this way. Yeah, totally unprofessional. We have no idea what we're fucking doing here, folks. No big deal. Yeah. I never said we're the oh, like, greatest. I did not like this one. Yeah. Here's the thing. I love how people that, and the only reason why I can say this, and I'll try to keep it to where it doesn't go back to the people that to hear about it, but uh, the people that actually try to help out with podcasts and everything, and they think, oh yeah, we're we're doing this. This is our stuff is so great, and then they they like blackball you on their stuff when you try to help them out and go on their show fucking I think it's fucking hilarious besides I don't have an extra three, two, oh, okay but yeah uh, the Ohio murders I guess I have a suspect uh, what the Man, they're just going on all this clickbait stuff, and I hate it. I, I see this one article, Idaho, uh, Idaho killing suspects got new license plate days after murders. Uh, we'll go to the timeline on events. Uh, more than six weeks after four university uh, Idaho students were mysteriously stabbed to death in a house near Moscow, Idaho campus. A suspect was identified and taken into custody. Uh, four, the four slain students were uh, Ethan Chaplin, 20, Madison Morgan, 21, uh, Zana Cordell, 20, and Kaylee Gonclave, 21. Uh, on the night of sa uh, Saturday, November 12th, uh, Gonclave and Morgan, lifelong best friends, went out to a corner club bar in downtown Moscow from 10 p.m. to 1.30 a.m., according to Moscow police. About 1.40 uh, a.m. a.m. The duo seen on video at Grub Truck, a local food uh, food vendor, and used the pri uh, private party for ride uh, for a ride home. Getting back at uh, 1:45 a.m., police said a man seen in surveillance video at the Grub Truck and the person who uh, drove them home are not considered suspects, according to authorities. Meanwhile, Chaplin uh, Crindle, who were dating. Went to Sigma Psi House Saturday night, police say. They also got home at about 1.45 a.m. Police said Chaplin did not live at the house but was sleeping over with his girlfriend, two other roommates who uh, survived the attack and are now considered suspects. Also went to Moscow uh, Saturday night and returned home at 1 a.m., police say. It's believed that four students were killed in the house uh, between 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. November 13th. Moscow uh, Mayor Art Burgeon told ABC News the dog was also at home, according to law enforcement. Moscow Police Chief James Fry called it an isolated targeted attack. The two survivors, uh, surviving roommates were in the basement sleeping through the murders. God, could you imagine sleeping through fucking murders? I mean, I just it is, up, it just, it it is a stabbing and everything. And from what the great Christopher uh, Lee says, I mean, you don't yell when you get stabbed. He was like, <sighs> when you stab in the back. When you stab in the back. I mean, even if you stab in the front, it's still going to be. <sighs> Depends on where, but they also like slashing the throat is a lot louder than what people think. Really? Here. Oh, yeah. Especially if you go deep enough to sever the windpipe, because all your wind blows out. It's Did much louder. I know, I know this is louder. like stupid dark and, I've read and everything. This, like, I, I want to I preface this. I've never done that. 
You never mur- murked but whatever somebody. Whatever. I have never murdered somebody that you are aware of. Um, I, I read it. Great was a book disclaimer. That- now this is this is total <laughs> dark. Could you imagine sliding someone's throat and the reality of it, and nobody like did it in Hollywood or everything? It sounds like someone's farting. Christopher Plummer, um, he was uh because he played Sauron in the Lord of the Rings. He also fought in World War. Uh, I think it was Christopher World Lee. Christopher, Christopher Lee, Lee. Lee. Yeah. Sauron. Yeah. Not Sauron. Christopher Lee. Um. I'm thinking Christopher Plummer for some reason. Anyway, Christopher Lee. I was like, what? Peter Jackson told him to just imagine or or visualize or, you know, picture the sound of somebody's throat being slashed. And he goes, I don't have to. I already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knew J.R.R. Token. um, Like, personally knew him. Yeah. He was the only one of the of the uh, of the cats that had actually met. Yeah, yeah. And then um, he's in a metal band. Yes, dude. Yes. Didn't they do something like it, it was some crazy number, like seven or nine albums that they that that band actually put out? It, it was an insane number for uh, yeah, yeah. Charlotte Main. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, pretty badass, dude. Have you heard it? Have I was you the one that you. Fucking badass! I love it. It is badass. I was the one that sent it to you. Do you send me so much shit? I don't know where it comes from. It just like pops into my head and being. I don't know where it all comes from. I it don't is... keep a fucking uh, bibliography uh, Chris, of where all this shit comes from. All right, so you know that liquid death, uh, sparkling mineral water. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that they put out two death metal albums? No way. Are you serious? Yeah, they're on. They're on Spotify. What they did, um, because back when they were first getting started on Facebook, they 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 had that ad campaign like you know sign your soul away, yeah, or trade your soul for a free case of water, right? Yeah, and like I they were getting that. so much hate, so much hate that they just said, you know what, screw this. They took all of the hate comments and they made metal songs out of them. <laughs> yes. Look up liquid death, liquid death on Spotify, dude. It is I gotta, I gotta, fucking great. I'm gonna look that up right now. I'm gonna look that up. Back to the Dude, show. Speaking of, do you know uh the Guardians of the Galaxy uh game that came out last year? Yeah. yeah. The soundtrack that they did for that is freaking epic. It is so good. And it was done by just a guy in Poland that he's a musician, but he's not like super well known. But it's on Spotify too. Look up Star Lord. Okay. Star Wars the band or something like that on on Spotify and just listen to that soundtrack. It it's just a throwaway soundtrack made for a game. It's fucking fantastic. It's so good. I have to check that out. Yes. Uh, the ro- two roommates called friends over their house because they thought one of the victims on this second floor had passed out and wasn't waking up. Police said at eleven fifty eight a.m. a nine one one caller. From one of the roommates, uh, roommate's phone requested help for an unconscious person. Police said the 911 caller identified has not been released, but police said multiple pe- uh, multiple people talked with the 911 dispatchers. Responding officers found uh, the four victims on the second and third floor. Police say authorities said that did not believe anyone at the house at the time of the 911 call was involved in the murders. Police also said they don't believe the man, Gonclave and Megan Mor- Morgan, yeah. uh, tried to contact numerous times on November the 13th is involved. The autopsy conducted on November 17th determined all victims were still uh, stabbed multiple <clears throat> times. You know, I've always, I always like, I understand they have to go through like the motions and everything, but it took like four days. I mean, they have to, you know, judge everything and put in like, you know, the newsworthy stuff and everything. It's like, I think this person was stabbed like multiple times. No shit. <laughs> but. <laughs> Today, obviously. Really, Captain Obvious, you're 
you're such intelligent and wise. Tell us something more. Well, I think they it was blood loss too. <laughs> Hold the fucking no phone. Way. No way. No way. No one no one tried to like patch up the holes after they stabbed them or anything and Okay, was it the stab they ran out of blood loss that uh, that killed them? They ran We're out still of trying blood. to figure that one out. They ran out of band-aids, I suppose. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny used them all. Four students uh, were probably asleep when he attacked, and some of the uh, some had defenses wounds. No shit. Uh, there's no sign of sexual assault. Police added of uh, the family of the 20 year old victim, Ethan Chaplin, held a memorial social service at November 21st. Chaplin, a triplet, was born right before his sister and brother. Could you imagine? That's one thing. Just imagine that you're an identical twin and you're looking at yourself dead on that table. That would that would that would, that would, that would freak me the fuck out. Oh god, yeah. That would fuck with my head really bad. Yeah. Um uh, 20-year-old lived his best life, last consciously. He was very loved. I like how I skipped through that bullshit. Uh, yada 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 yada, 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 yada the best thing. part <laughs> i have a well dan cummings has this joke he hasn't like printed out it was on one uh it was on that un, unsubscribed podcast that i sent you mm. uh can you can you imagine like you know the uh, a bus full of people go out and they die and all the people were loved and nobody goes up to memorial service or anything. It's like this motherfucker was an asshole. I don't know why he has so many people here. So that's what I say. I would want like make my eulogy like you know he was he's I right. he was cool you know he had just kind of at my funeral. I want somebody, preferably a friend that has like a British accent or something, to wear the same Scottish. outfit. Scottish. Okay, that that'll work too. But they need to wear the same outfit. That I had on the day I died. <laughs> During the funeral service, they need to rush in and pull a sonic screwdriver out of their pocket and be like, okay, this is where it's going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> I want the full pull David a tool, Tennant, total Doctor Who. Wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, timey whiny. If those words aren't uttered, then you may as well not even do it. I want somebody to take an axe. And chop off my head during the memorial service and say, finally, there can be only one. I want – no, 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 no. See, you then you put the head on a stick, and then you pass the stick around. Whoever holds the stick, uh, you know, you, you say a few words. It's – I want – and you have to say it to the head. You have to actually hold it. It look gaze lovingly. Into into my eyes. Deliver your eulogy, couple of lines, whatever sense, and you pass it off to the next person. Like it's like passing the collection plate. But I love Rodney you know. Carrington's bit on it. He goes, you know, people always say he's in a better place. Well, what if he's an asshole? <laughs> Just buried that fucker in a sweater. It's gonna be hot where he's going. <laughs> he's like, I want to be cremated when I die. Except cut my balls and my dick off first and put that shit in the chili. Because those are words you never want to hear at the wake. There's a dick in the chili. <laughs> like, he's like, people always say, oh, they look so good. Like, you don't know. But like, that fucker stinks. <laughs> I don't want to get to the golf and start gagging. Golf and it stinks. <laughs> Uh, and if, if you're just catching this at this point in time and you don't know where you're at, neither do we, <laughs> you're in the right. Trust part. me. We are just as lost as you are. Trust me. As, as police in Idaho search for answers, the suspect later identified as Brian, uh, Kobroger was stopped by Indian 
Indiana police on December 15th for traffic violations. See, it's fucking traffic violations that get you every it's time. It's always the dumbest shit. Well, Timothy McVeigh got busted after Oklahoma City because he ran a toll booth. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only it's reason still he has got a traffic caught. violation. Mm hmm. Uh, Koberger was a PhD student at which, uh, Washington State University. I almost fucked that up. <laughs> start looking at you a little differently right there yeah located at 10 uh 10 miles away from the Uni university of idaho after uh kurtzberger uh semester at washington state ended in december he and his uh, father drove across country together at to the family's pennsylvania home his attorney monroe county chief of Pol uh, public defender chief oh, damn that's a long one monroe county chief public defender uh, Jason Labar told ABC News they drove the pre-planned road trip in the white Hyundai in, in Electra? Electra? Elantra. Elantra. I hate fucking weird names for cars. <clears throat> the Hyundai. <laughs> uh, let's call it something fucked up so they can remember it. Really? Hey, refresh that Walmart page because I don't know if it's going to let you read your own review. <clears throat> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They drove the plan, uh, pre planned road trip in the white. Oh, I got that. That the authorities said they were looking for in connection to the murders, according to Labar. Uh, Car Carberger and his father were stopped twice on December 15th while dr uh, driving east to Indianapolis. Both times with young Koberger uh, in the driver's seat. I don't know why that's so fucking hard to say. Uh, they first stopped. Uh, they were first stopped by Hancock County Sheriff's Office for speeding, and then nine minutes later by the Indiana State Police for following another uh, vehicle too close, according to officers. After. Koksberger arrest, the sheriff's department and state police said there was no information at the time on the suspects in Idaho crimes or specific information on the white Hyundai. The state police added the trooper having learned the two had been stopped uh, minutes before the deputies from the Hancock County Sheriff's Department, who, who he knew was working just down the inter interstate from him used his discretion and released the two men with a verbal warning. Da, da, da. Yeah, the, the reason why a lot of people are going after on this one is because the main town that it happened at, uh, Moscow, uh, Idaho, is the, the lawyer... <laughs> They had to have eventually had to have FBI come in just to help them out with the murders because that town's never seen a murder. In yeah. Like years. And that's the reason why a lot of people are uh, trying to report on these murders and everything. Yes, it's horrible. And there's actual data that if they're young and uh, halfway decent looking, like all of us, if we were murdered, there would be no <laughs> news coverage at all. So there might be a party. Lucky. There might be a couple of parties, but yeah, kind of a ding dong. No, 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 no. Speak for yourself, David. Chris and I, we would be missed. <laughs> I can. Think I wouldn't of say you wouldn't be missed. I'm saying I, you wouldn't make national news. I I can think of at least three people that might shed a single tear. They wouldn't take off work, but they would shed at least a single tear. There would be a, a moment of, of you know, during their lunch break, uh, they would take a moment of silence. Uh, I, I can think of a few people that, you know, you know, I, yeah, I can think of a few people that would take the day off. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure. I can think of a whole bunch of people that probably wouldn't even notice. You'd be like, God damn, I haven't heard from him in a while. Where the hell's he been? Oh, he got he really murdered. And get yeah. Right. Yeah. Damn, how's he doing now? <laughs> Is he all right? 
What has he but done lately? <laughs> <laughs> Tell that fucker to call me. Right? You know, okay, so <laughs> if 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 you know I'm gonna need you guys. I'm gonna we need to figure out like a like a cloud box, you know, cloud file or something like that where we keep our Facebook passwords in there. So that way when one of us kicks the bucket, the other two can keep yes. posting on our Oh Facebook. god. Yes. And just some but like no no no, no. it too. But it would have to be like like a message from beyond the grave type of thing. Like you would still have to be writing about us in it would be completely first person. And like right. a a running commentary of wherever you would want us to be, or you're like uh, you're, or hiding from your grave. It's like it's like you pick one person to haunt, and you just start making a run. Or you know, like or you know, some political story, you link it to your to your timeline or whatever, right? And be like, I'm all the way up here looking down, and I'm still shaking my head. <laughs> Dude, <can you> imagine? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, damn it, I voted Democrat again. Damn it, man. What the yeah. hell? Come on. <laughs> you know, yeah, shit. if another Democrat wins, a, <laughs> when, you know, when the Democrats win another election, you, know, you can just you just put, have your Facebook profile update. I swear to God, it wasn't God me. Was... <laughs> God can vouch for me. He's standing <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about. Could you, you imagine that? that starts a trend? I would love that. That would be great. Could you imagine that starts a trend? <laughs> you don't know if there. You don't know if that's real or not. Or uh, that person's. I was like, is that? I thought he died like two years ago. He did. It'd be like the Mandela it effect. Could, yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe he did die. I think he ran into something there, boy. (laughs) 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 It wasn't the large. It wasn't the large large hadron collider. It was not that. It was. It was a group of asshole friends that just made everybody think he was still alive. Using them as a meat puppet. Folks, you heard it here first, folks. We figured it out. Busted. Uh, I you... am not suicidal. Hillary Clinton, don't come after me. I guess we can uh, wrap that up. Yes. Now. Hillary, right on. Do we, do we, do we, do we just, well, okay. Hillary, right on, uh, Clinton. <laughs> I am um, not new, suicidal. Yeah. Um, I'm really terrible at tying knots. Um, I don't even think I even it. even though the, even though the Ranger Handbook tells me that I should be, for the purposes of this commentary, I am terrible at tying knots. <laughs> While I may be a complete nightmare in a firefight, I uh, I have to openly and honestly say my aim is not so bad that I hit. The back of my head. You haven't figured out how to do that whole wanted thing and make your bullets bend and go backwards. Right, because I'm not James fucking McAvoy. <laughs> and I'm not married to the hepatitis C queen Angelina Jolie. Oh yeah, I said it. Does Come at really me. Have I dare you. I don't know. Uh, come on now. If you heard that in the news though, would you be surprised? No, not really. Okay, there you go. See, I mean, she did date the... Billy Bob Thornton. I'm no, I mean, not hey, have anybody. You can leave Billy Bob alone. Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody in fucking Hollywood has hepatitis, you don't, you don't mess with Billy Bob. Mm. <laughs> That's what's, what's wrong with the story here. Got no gas in it. Ain't got no gas in it. No, no. <laughs> mm. The moral of the story. You talk about Billy Bob. Mm. He just lived. He'd kill you. <laughs> Should not do that. Either. Well, this one, this one went like totally off of the rails onto another rail. Thought it had traction, and then got off on the rails again. 
But the point is, is that we eventually at some point got back on a set of rails. <laughs> yes. But it it's, matter, it's like railing on the old V, like Wii Sports, you know. You know, you can, a, you can let the ball go and it, it, it doesn't hit the pins, but you can hit the crowd behind you. Look, yeah. when you own, when you have the whole bowling alley, does it really matter what lane you end up in? I mean You're not I wrong. I mean, sincerely, that that's pretty good. Look, 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 we're knocking pins down. Does it matter where they are? The, they're they're getting knocked out. You're yeah. focusing on all the wrong things. Life is not about the journey. It's about the destination. This is true. This is very true. Uh, pearls, just pearls. Of people call it a Kaiser blade. I called it a sling blade. Hey. Uh. <laughs> I didn't right, like not like it too much what that fellow was doing to my mother. Mm. You know what's even hit him with more it. hilarious is none of us are medicated. That's what's even more hilarious. <laughs> what now? None but of us, none of us are medicated. Like we can't blame this on on medication. Man. Not even you. No, no. That's what's that's what's great. Yeah, I, I, I maybe I, we should be medicated, but <laughs> in a different in a different style. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> uh, I can't argue with that. Oh, oh boy, we try to profile high. You know, we try to profile serial killers and psychopaths, and uh, we end up demonstrating to our listening and viewing audiences that we are exactly who we detest. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. Except for the murky murk. We don't murky murk people. Right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. For legal reasons, yes. Hi, Grogu. Hi. <laughs> that is a yes. Absolutely. Correct. Well, oh, we can go I ahead and uh, stop this. Right <laughs> I guess we can stop that here. I'm Dick Dickerman. <laughs> I mean... There's no legitimate reason why I, would, I should have. You know, this, I keep right? on trying to stop this. Legitimate. Johnny G keeps us going. Can I need to keep this shirt short. We need look, to look, sure look at that. stuff I gotta do. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna pick the EMG. Do you know how old that round is? Older than me. Do you ever see that video where the guys like I'm hammer with a marble mallet all those fifty caliber rounds? Oh, He's, those were uh, thirty mic mic rounds. By oh, the way, my mic rounds. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah, but this is this is a thirty year old round. You can still fire it. It's still good. You can hear it. No, that's the powder in the casing. <laughs> it's nice. Are we ready to stop? I told my wife tonight that uh, no, I guess not. I told my wife tonight that I'm going to buy a Barrett because you know that the ATF removed the tax stamp requirements for that, right? They removed the tax stamp for that a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't need a tax stamp to buy a Barrett anymore. Of course, you don't have to worry about a tax stamp or anything to buy a cannon. You can own a cannon. Hell, That's you can true. make a cannon. Dude, I want a mortar so bad. Oh, have you ever I been? Mean, baseline baseline <laughs> Barrett without the optics on it started at eight grand, but, you know, hey, who am I to complain? But you can't afford 25 bucks for a merch club. I said at some point, you know, when I grow up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you know, I mean, if my black rifle stock performed any better, I might be able to afford some of their stuff. Wow. I just, you just had to, to get the forearm in there. Right? <laughs> but unlike most of the, uh, bro vets out there i haven't sold my stocks listen it's a long term this is a long yeah. term investment yeah as you so eloquently put a few minutes ago it's not about the journey it's the destination right? <laughs> <laughs> that's my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> all right david tried to re uh, try to outro himself so he's david dickerman i'm johnny skelton and i am chris jack thank you, you all for watching to psychos and sociopaths Thank you for coming along with this slippery Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Have fun, everybody. And as always, go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs>